This video again will deal with sound and the case of a standing wave is the primary content but just an interesting application of interference of sound waves. Uh, noise canceling headphones, canceling noise from the outside environment. So in the situation here the equipment picks up um, the room noise or the environment noise where you might be and sends it to your ears out of phase by half of a wavelength. So if a peak comes in here and a peak is coming into your ear, this system is going to translate this peak into a valley and send that to the uh, speakers in the headset. So you have a peak from the room noise, you have a valley that from the processed room noise, those two add together to make zero. We get destructive interference and the headphones can uh, reduce the energy reaching the eardrum. Uh, so noise canceling headphones, there's good physics behind it. Destructive interference is the mechanism. The electronics here convert a peak to a valley and give a, uh, a cancellation. So let's talk about resonance in an air column. Resonance in an air column. We have a tuning fork here. It sends a sound wave towards this closed end. This might be a wall or it might, in a vertical application, we could have water forming the uh, barrier for the sound. The sound is going to bounce off of this. It comes back towards the tuning fork. What will happen if, as the sound comes back, it's traveled through a total distance um, of half a wavelength, let's say. What would happen in, in that situation? Well, let's go ahead and uh, uh, look at the pictures here. Getting back a half cycle later, we're going to get constructive interference because the source up here is now, to half, now a half cycle later, and we get um, the arrangement of constructive interference we get a standing wave set up. I think I'll go ahead and go to the pictures here. Now the standing wave, the wave that goes down and reflects back, travels a total distance of roughly half a wavelength. This quarter wavelength is an approximation from the opening of the tube to the, to the wall, but roughly a half a wavelength of total distance traveled. That's going to take place as the tuning fork goes through half of a cycle. So we're going to have um, constructive interference set up. The waves are going to be in phase. The new wave that's generated by the tuning fork and the wave that went down and came back, they're going to be in phase with each other. Now if we uh, listen for this, we can adjust the length here and we'll hear a loud sound when we have this proper length set up in the system. Uh, they'll have constructive interference of the new wave being generated by the tuning fork and this original wave that comes back after traveling a total distance of half a wavelength. We'll hear a resonance. We'll hear a loud sound. We're hearing a standing wave, what's called a standing wave. Out in front of the uh, opening is the anti-node where we get maximum vibration of the material, the medium, the air. And at the wall we get minimum vibration. That's a node. So node and anti-node. We can also lengthen the column such that there's three-fourths of a wavelength for the, uh, the wave that's traveling down the, uh, uh, the air column. And again, in a vertical situation, we could have a water uh, barrier, uh, some height of water in a tube to create this length. But as this uh, uh, wave goes down, we still would have this effect here of a quarter wavelength down a quarter wavelength back to bring us to a resonance for the uh, the wave generated by the tuning fork. And now we have an extra one wavelength. Between a node and the next node there's half a wavelength and we get half a wavelength down here, half a wavelength back. That's a full wavelength. So if we go one wavelength on a wave we get back to the same conditions in the wave and this is acting very similar to what we had with the uh, previous pictures where we have one quarter wavelength down, one quarter wavelength back up. This extra wavelength here doesn't matter. This one wavelength of extra travel. We're at the same position on the wave. So we again get a loud sound for the uh, 
the air column and the tuning fork combination. And there are other patterns, of course. We could extend the air column farther and uh, have another full wavelength of back and forth down here and extend it even further. This sets up a pattern of what frequencies will have um, a resonance, will have a loud sound. The Again, the velocity of the wave is uh, wavelength divided by frequency. So our frequency is velocity divided by the wavelength. In this situation, with one quarter wavelength equal to the L that they're specifying here, then we would have uh, wave velocity divided by 4L. In a situation where there are three half wavelength segments, so one half, one half, one half, three half wavelength segments um, along here, we get our wavelength actually working out to be four thirds times L, this given distance of L. And uh, the wave is fitting into this distance L. We have this set up and this L is adjusted again to give us a resonance, to give us a loud sound. So we have a, <coughs> excuse me, I should have been saying quarter wavelengths. Um, from anti-node to node, that's a quarter wavelength. From node to anti-node, that's a quarter wavelength. And from anti-node to node, that's a quarter wavelength. So uh, let me just go back to the first one. This wavelength here, one quarter of a wavelength is node to anti-node. So one quarter wavelength is L. Um, if we multiply both sides by four, then wavelength is equal to four L. In this case, we have three of these one-quarter wavelength segments. Anti-node to node is one-quarter wavelength. Node to anti-node is one-quarter wavelength. Anti-node to node is one-quarter wavelength. So three of the quarter wavelength segments equals L. Multiply both sides by four, divide both sides by three, and we find the wavelength is four-thirds L. The frequency is the wave velocity divided by the wavelength. So temporarily, we would have 4L divided by 3 in the denominator. And of course, we can invert and multiply. And we find that this frequency is 3 times the wave velocity divided by 4L. The situation in this picture is that L is fixed. Okay, L is a fixed number. And we'll have different frequencies that can create a resonance effect. So the fundamental frequency is V over 4L for this pipe that's closed at one end. Here's the closed end, here's the open end. The next frequency that will have a loud sound would be 3 times the fundamental frequency. This combination of V over 4L is the fundamental frequency. And our next uh, uh, loud sound would occur when the frequency is adjusted to be 3 times the fundamental frequency. If we go to this next picture, this will be our last one we'll discuss here. Quarter wavelength, second quarter wavelength, third quarter wavelength, fourth quarter wavelength, fifth quarter wavelength. So we have five of these quarter wavelength segments equals L. So if we multiply by four and divide by five, we find the wavelength is four-fifths times L. Again, the frequency is velocity divided by wavelength. And this 5 that's in the denominator in a fraction that's in a denominator you should work this out on paper to confirm that to yourself. Um, produce a factor of 5 times the fundamental frequency. So I would call these harmonics. We have the fundamental. We have the third harmonic, 3 times the fundamental. We have the fifth harmonic, uh, 5 times the fundamental frequency. The pipe is a fixed length in this example. Uh, and we can use different tuning forks or a sound generator to create these, uh, these resonance conditions. So what if we have a pipe that's open on both ends instead of closed on one end? Well, then we have a different situation. Now we have anti-node at both ends. The pipe is open here, that's anti-node. The pipe is open here, that's anti-node. And now we have a situation where we have a um, uh, L value here. Again, one quarter wavelength from anti-node to node, another quarter wavelength from node to anti-node, so we have half a wavelength across the span of L. Multiply both by two, you know, one half wavelength equals L, multiply both sides by two, and we get the wavelength is equal to 2L. Our fundamental frequency then is V over 2L. Notice that that's different than the fundamental frequency for the pipe closed at one end. 
that fundamental frequency is found to be velocity divided by 4L. When the pipe is open at both ends, we get the fundamental frequency velocity over 2L. So you can uh, detect this yourself. If you take a roll of uh, uh, paper towels, save that roll once the paper towel is uh, uh, all used up, and hold that uh, tube to your ear and listen for a particular tone, you'll hear this frequency, uh, the V over 2L, where L is the length of the paper towel roll. And then if you put your hand over the far end of this uh, arrangement, now you're creating a closed pipe situation. And the fundamental frequency you're going to hear is going to be V over 4L. You should hear a lower tone when the pipe is closed at one end. When it's open at both ends, it's V over 2L. When it's closed at one end, it's V over 4L. So this pipe closed at one end, you're going to hear a, a lower frequency. And it's noticeable. Uh, first overtone, if we fit another wave in here, uh, looking again to have this resonance uh, with, amp with anti-node on both ends, now the wavelength is equal to L. You can see the full wavelength uh, across here uh, with one quarter wavelength, two quarter wavelengths, three quarter wavelengths, four quarter wavelengths. Again, node to anti-node is quarter wavelength. So we have four of those one-fourth wavelength packages. The wavelength is equal to L. And we could rewrite this as 2 times V over 2L. I can always put in a factor of 1 and some multiplication. I'm going to choose to put in a factor here, 2 divided by 2. And now, as I talk here, uh, this second um, harmonic is going to have a frequency of 2 times V over 2L. And that's second harmonic. The next harmonic that we would hear would be the third harmonic. You could work out the uh, the wavelength here in terms of L, but we get 3 times V over 2L. This last one I would rewrite as um, 4 times V over 2L. And that would be the fourth harmonic. Uh, the fundamental is V over 2L. So 2 times that fundamental, 3 times that fundamental, 4 times that fundamental would be the frequency that would be heard. So that's a, a quick experiment you can do. You know, look for a empty roll of paper towels about to be empty use the last one put that tube to your ear and then cover one end to uh, to detect the uh, the frequencies the uh, concept here of standing waves on instruments is is very important now so you know, guitars we uh, clamp down on the string at a particular fret on the, uh, the neck of the guitar that creates a certain length and that adjusts the resonant frequency um, for the guitar, it's like this, except now we have node at both ends on the string that's being clamped down. But we get the same pattern of frequencies, and there are the fundamental and there are harmonics. Musical instruments, the quality or the, uh, the sound, is due to the combination of what harmonics are present. And uh, different craftsmen will create a violin, let's say, with a... Uh, a range of harmonics, uh, you know, emphasizing certain harmonics over another and give a certain quality to the to the instrument. But basically it's length of some resonant uh, uh, material, either air or the, uh, the strings. Uh, if you look at a piano, the bass, uh, bass strings are very long and heavy. Uh, so we're not going to talk about the heaviness, but the, the length gives us a lower frequency. And different instruments, the flute, is a short instrument, has high frequencies. Uh, the trombone, the air pipe, air column is long and gives us a, a low note. So there's physics behind making of instruments. Um, and before physics was a subject, people were making instruments. So here gourds are being used for the resonant uh, material and you can see the different size gourds. They've been selected for the note that they're trying to play. And there is a connection more complicated than we're going to analyze here when the shapes uh, that are not cylinders are involved. But uh, the basic physics is the same. Sort of the, uh, the length of the air column is changing here, being longer. So these would be the bass notes on the left side and the treble notes over on the right side. So hope you have some fun with that. And, uh, of course, read and ask your instructor questions.